Hello, hello, this is Thrasos, and welcome to episode 4 of my Feed the Beast Let's Play. The uh, mod pack we're playing is Resurrection. Let's get started. Uh, kind of did a couple little layout things here, built this nifty little bridge. Messed, I've messed around some with carpenter's blocks, trying to figure them out some. As you can see, it's uh, I'm recording this on the 24th, so all the chests are uh, cool little presents and stuff. So what, what we ended up covering, finishing off with last episode, was me putting together this coke oven here. And I dug out this tunnel and laid out this uh, forestry multi-farm. Kind of got it uh, laid out just with you know, dirt there, just to give it an idea of uh, how it's going to set. The thing with the multi-farm is that, uh, as far as I know, it's not really nerfed or changed much, if at all, by Greg Tech. However, it does take a lot of tin, and tin is something that I don't hardly have anything of. I think I have like maybe one bar in one of my chests somewhere. So tin is what I'm going to be looking for. So I'm going to be doing a lot of mining in between takes, in between cuts, I'm kind of showing you guys a little bit of a uh, little bit of the veins I found. Uh, I'm also going to show you guys a little bit about finding finding veins, uh, methods I've seen to find them pretty easy. I'm just going to cut into my little mine shaft here and start working down. Now way over there, see so yeah, I found an iron vein in the wall in, in a cave over there and there's a bunch of uh, what's it called, abandoned railway stations kind of over there a ways uh, at a couple different levels. But I want to kind of show you guys the technique I sort of found to find something. If you look up in the top right hand corner, the the mini map there, you can kind of see caves in the in the darkness. I've dug out a lot of the stuff to the left here. I'm gonna kind of just look around for something right in through here. Let's see something good. Let me just zoom in. I'm hitting the plus button to zoom in on the. Uh, journey map there. You start to see. Uh, here it comes. See those uh, creepers show up, and you see that uh, increase like opening size come up. So that's more open there. And as I keep going up, the piece of that cavern is still there, pretty high up. So I'm going to assume that is a. That's some large cat. I'm just assuming it might be some kind of large cavern that just has a uh, lava at the bottom of it. So I'm going to just dig through and head over in that direction. I got to be over top of it somewhere. Oh, and there it is. Excellent. Yep, just uh. Just as I was kind of picturing it. it, looks like a big open cavern with uh, just lava filled at the bottom of it. You can get some light up here. Yeah, oh, that looks good. Look at that. Oh, there's a ton of ore. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh man, look at all that. Hoping to see a boatload of tin in here somewhere. Because, ooh, not good. Oh, there. Okay. I see ya. I see ya. Ooh, it's only funny when it happens to the skeletons. Okay. Let's see here. <sighs> I have to be careful with this one. I got 
plenty of food. So I'm not necessarily worried about taking a little bit of damage. I'm just worried about that cat knocking me off into that lava that I was just chuckling about knocking a zombie into. That... I have a horrible, horrible allergy to irony, so that would not be funny in the least. Okay, so, creepy blew up, knocked me down here. Got lucky, landed on some uh, stone outcropping. So, this is why you... It's always good to carry a bucket of water. Pick it back up. Come out here. And that sea of dangerous, deadly floor of lava suddenly becomes a completely slight, safe floor of cobblestone. Or of uh, obsidian. <clears throat> Only thing I got to worry about is spawns. Alright, I just wanted to cut in here. I got a good hunk of this uh, cavern uh, blocked off, just going slow and steady. I um, had a couple of close calls, uh, just digging around, fell a couple of times, uh, almost had a creeper blow me up. I just want to cut in to show you this massive iron vein here. Uh, I'm up around Y25, and this is, this is just huge. Uh, ah, <laughs> and another almost fell full of my death. So let me just pull up some food to get the full regeneration and yeah, here we go. We got uh calor cal caprite ore. I wonder if that's actually iron or if that's uh pyrite, calcoprite. Oh, that's a, that's a copper. So, what we got here is tons of copper with a little bit of iron strewn in. <clears throat> and this is, you know, probably stacks of copper. But I'm not really hurting for copper. What I'm really looking for is tin, and I haven't seen a single piece of tin down here. So I'm guessing maybe tin is something that needs to be uh, looked for up higher. It might be one of the ores where you need to be you know, kind of like above Y72 or something. I see tons of iron down here, but, uh, tin is what I need for both the forestry farm and to really get into the Bronze Age. So even, uh, you know, for anything I do, I'm, I'm really going to need a whole whole batch of tin. Yeah, see, this is the this is the iron ores here, the uh, lemonite, the brown, yellow, and... I don't know what the malachite is. Did that fall? Oh, yeah, it's just uh, hanging up there. Let me take a look at that. Mal... Malachite... Okay, it's a copper, so that's all the limonites. As you can see, yellow limonite. Smelts and just smells straight into iron. Doesn't even need any of the hammer processing that you have to do with uh, some of the more complicated ones. So the yellow and the brown limonite is really what you need for the copper. That actually even yields the full. I'm sorry, n you need for the iron. That even y yields the full iron ingot rather than the malachite that you find up high yields just a uh, uh, what was it, three three of the nuggets, the one-ninth of a bar. So I'm going to cut out here and I'm going to head back to my, that uh, the staircase, my main uh, mine shaft. Alright, cutting back in. Since I didn't find any tin ore down like 60 and below in that place, I also have another uh, another mine site over there. I came up high. Oh. Uh, I'm up on top of those mountains that uh, I'm eventually going to build my fortress 
thing on or whatever build I end up uh, deciding on later. I'm coming up through here. I just happen to notice that some of these rocks look a little bit different. I remember how iron ore looks a lot like smooth stone. And then I notice that this is cassarite and tin. And tin is what I'm really looking for. Let me just pull this up and see what's what. Alright, cassarite smelts directly in... Oh! Well, that's neat. Cassarite smells directly into two tin ingots. Oh, well, that's super handy. Uh, so I might have been passing whole deposits of tin and not even realized it. I just happen to be uh, jumping around up here, climbing up. I notice, oh, that's not a smooth stone, is it? Huh, how about that? Uh... You know, if you're using a, de a texture pack, other than default, uh, you might not have that issue. You know, I think I've seen some people using, uh, using like SPACs or something like that. Uh, I really chose to use default just to kind of hold myself to, uh, you know, default appearances for, like, builds and stuff. I didn't want to use SPACs or any of the other, you know, just generally fancier looking, uh fancier looking resource packs uh, just to know what it looks like with with default so uh, I am going to strip this whole hillside out to see how much tin I get I will get back to you in just a minute when I've uh, reduced this hilltop to nothing okay So this is what it looks like before. And that's how it ends up looking. I am pretty sure I got pretty much every uh, every piece of tin out of there. I've been digging for a minute and I haven't found anything else yet. Uh, this is what I'm looking at now. One, two, two and a quarter-ish stacks of tin. Almost half a stack of that uh, cassarite that uh, ends up giving me double. And a whole boatload of co uh, cobblestone and gravel. So I will meet you guys back down at my base. Alright, I'm back down at my base. I ended up putting pretty much all that tin through this uh, quartz grindstone. If it has a ores that are unique to Greg Tech, like uh, Alamindine, Bauxite, Calcite, Stibnite, Tantalite, all the unique Greg Tech ores, uh, you can't put those through a grindstone, but all the ones that have the generic Minecraft names, you can. So all that tin ore from up there, like at a Y90 or whatever, I put through here. So, I put about a, uh, about a, what do I figure, maybe two stacks or so uh, through. Uh, turned about a half a stack into bronze that I'm going to use here in a minute. Let me uh, show you the bronze recipes. There's a couple different ways you can make bronze. Uh, uh, both of the methods are three copper and one tin ratio like this see this is if you put it through as if you make it as an ingot it's you know three copper one tin gives you one bronze ingot if however you combine these materials as uh, in the dust form it gets you three dust which is three ingots so it's way more efficient if you combine your tin and your copper and dust form. Um, that might not be possible with, uh, what was that, cassonite? I probably, I think I've already put it all through, but, you know, the Greg Tech specific ones that you can't 
necessarily uh, grind up in a grindstone. It might be possible later on once you get more once you get more infrastructure and we are able to yeah once we're able to like mace rate stuff or stuff like that that might be possible I'll, I'll check on that when I get get to that point as far as uh, you know how much infrastructure I have uh, but right now any bronze I need I'm definitely going to try to combine it as the, in the dust form rather than the ingot form all right now our first step in getting started with some forestry crafting will be to craft a thermionic fabricator that what's let that that's what lets you craft the uh, electron tubes that's required in a lot of the uh, a lot of the forestry items so to get started with that this is the recipe uh, we're going to need a sturdy casing first. That's just eight bronze. Those. And this is just glass, gold, and the chest. Chest just looks like that because this is uh, Christmas. Hmm. Uh, let's see about doing this manually. Two, three. I'm short one gold. Let me go grab that real quick. Uh, Alright. This should be it. Excellent. <clears throat> and we are going to need a power source. And I am hoping hobbyist generator and a couple pieces of coal coke should work well. Give me one second to gather up the rest of the resources I'll need and I'll get right back with you guys. Alright, uh, I came in here to what will end up being my uh, forestry area, sent down my thermionic fabricator, uh, shift click my hobbyist steam engine onto it. I don't have any pipes right now, so I just hooked it right up to it. Got an infinite water source. I'll just bucket up into it as I need to. And let's see how this works. Switch it on. And it's heating up. I'm going to go ahead and throw one more in there. Uh, I guess this starts producing power once it gets up to 100 degrees centigrade. You know, the boiling point of water. I guess it starts producing steam then. And here we should go. if this even produces RF. Or does this just to straight produce steam? Uh, I sure hope I wasn't completely wrong. Hold on, I'll be back. And I just lost all that to a creeper. Oh, that's good. Excellent. Ah, <sighs> I just wanted to record it, so, uh, make sure it's there for posterity and all that jazz. I'm not 100% sure if, uh, if a hobbyist steam engine is enough to 
heat up that thermionic fabricator enough. I'm going to experiment with some stuff for a little bit and try to figure it out. Alright, I think this might be working now. I remade my thermionic fabricator, put down my two remaining hobbyist steam engines, and it looks like it's actually working. It takes a while. It's slow. I got a wooden transport pipes and a wooden kinesis pipe connecting to a stone kinesis pipe both of them feeding into this and this should be about to melt awesome alright uh I cut away for a little bit. I ended up running and grabbing a bunch more resources. Quickly clicked here, looked through the recipes for uh, various electron tubes. I went and grabbed what I could. Uh, grabbed some gold to make some gold electron tubes, iron for the iron, appetite, did some bronze and some copper. Couldn't really remember exactly what all I was going to end up needing. And I didn't want to waste a whole lot of resources while uh, while this was going. It takes uh, it seems to take a while for these to warm up, so that's going to be something I'm going to have to uh, keep track of. I've already made my first uh, first nine farm blocks. I'm going to need I guess it's uh, 36 of those minus four of the special types. Uh, to do the forestry multi farm, you're going to need it's a three by four structure, so it's a a three by three by four structure. So that's nine by four, thirty six. But four of them have to be one of them has to be a farm gearbox, one has to be a farm hatch. Uh, let's see here, farm valve and farm controller. <clears throat> uh, the different ones in any eye are just different f different forms. The basic one is the farm block with uh, stone bricks. You see these other things out here. Uh, you can use mossy stone brick or bricks if you have a ton of co if you have a ton of clay to cook up and uh, bricks or whatever you have a bunch of resources of you can really use it here or whatever you want aesthetically we've got a ton of nether resources that's just as good I guess uh, I've never really done it out of anything with stone bricks but that's just an aesthetic thing so I'm going to cook up a I already have a bunch of the I've al I think I already have enough of the electron tubes I'm going to I said I needed 36, it's 28 there. Probably going to have to run this again to get get another half dozen or so. Um, oh no, I had them in my inventory. Alright, I thought I had it. Okay, there we go. So, to get these other f the other four brick types you need for the multi-block, a lot of it's going to be uh, 10 gears is it for... The farm gearbox, three ten gears in a farm block, two ten gears in a trap door, uh, two glass in a ten gear, and two redstone and a golden tube, electron tube. I knew we needed uh, some more for this, so that's why when I had uh, when I had it already up and running, I just made made it made at least a one set of everything my resources could support cuz if you want to make a specific uh specific farm layout you need a uh, different electron tube types so i made a few extra knowing that it's uh probably the mo more expensive part of, as far as time wise is just waiting for that to start up so i'm going to cut away and uh start making what i need all right. Uh, there's a few different t 
10 gear recipes. Uh, let me just show you this. The form gear box. Well, a few of them require 10 gears. And there's a few different 10 gear recipes. Uh, the one from Greg Tech wants you to get uh, four plates, four rods, and some kind of tool. Uh, the one from Forestry just wants a copper bar in the middle, and there's one other that wants an iron bar in the middle. So I'm just doing the Forestry one, which is just four iron bars and a copper bar in the middle. I'm going to need six of them. I got a four already. Five, six. Okay. Now let me head over here and start crafting you know, the four specialist pieces. Alright, and I got the thing assembled. Putting down my last piece. The hatch now, and... Drum roll, please. Bam. Multi-block assembled. Ha ha. Ooh. Don't do that. Alright, see, if you want to customize this, you can put a... Uh... A specifically crafted uh, uh, electronic circuit in here to customize the layout of this but I don't want that I don't need that right away I got my valve for water back here gearbox for power I got my hatch for item input output and on this side I just have the control box it doesn't do anything so uh, so that's that all right. Now I'm going to have to replace all this dirt with, uh, with stone bricks, and then once I've got everything hooked up, the the dirt in here will be one on top of that. All right. I got a preliminary startup done. Threw some dirt in there. Threw some oak saplings in there. Crafted up some fertilizer from uh, from appetite and two sand. I think 24 appetite ended up getting me three and a quarter stacks of fertilizers. This so that's gonna last quite a while. Uh, let me get this started up. I really do need to get a uh, an aqueous accumulator going, but I just wanted to kind of get a preliminary startup making sure this just worked. I'll probably do an aqueous accumulator to all my stuff. That's probably is the next thing. Looks like it's working. Looks like it's working. Again this has to get to 100 degrees Celsius. Celsius? Yes. Celsius centigrade? Celsius, that's what it's called. That's that's a ticket. Okay, and that's working a little bit now. See, that's wearing down. It's starting to plant. Let me go ahead and hop up top and see what it looks like. Alright. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about. Now... It's probably not going to get going for a little while because those took a while to warm up before. But it's a start. Start of automation. Start of infinite wood. Uh, as soon as I get in wood getting produced off this, I can start using the I can start using charcoal off of that to start powering my things. So uh, I think that's going to be about it for this episode. Alright, that's a wrap for this episode. Remember, hit the like or subscribe button if you enjoyed the episode. Uh, leave any comments, uh, stuff you think it can improve upon. And I will see you guys later. Okay, bye.